Today, as we begin the Lenten journey, we remember another beginning. When God first formed a human being out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the human became a living being. After Eve and then Adam eat of the forbidden fruit, God searches for them in the garden and says to them, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We tend to hear this injunction as a curse, as one more denunciation of sin, as though Ash Wednesday were a celebration of our sin and unworthiness. The truth we speak today about our mortality is only offensive if it's heard as an insult and not a promise. It's only offensive when it's heard as being the last word. And it's not. It's not the last word. When we are signed with ashes, we hear this injunction. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The word remember does not come from quoting the book of Genesis. It comes instead from Psalm 103, verse 14. For God knows how we are made. God remembers that we are dust. This remembering on God's part evokes in God an act of gracious fidelity. The reality of our dust does not evoke in God rejection or judgment, but rather faithfulness. Just before this verse, in verse 12, the psalmist declares, as far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. What counts is not our sin, but God's gracious act of removal. When God remembers our dusty creatureliness, it evokes in God fidelity and compassion. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Verse 13, God's loyal covenant love is the counterpoint to our dust. God knows we are going to die, and this awareness evokes in God deep, caring concern. Verse 17, but the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and God's righteousness to children's children. God's resolve to right the world for us in ways that we cannot do for ourselves. Psalm 103 surrounds our dust with all of God's massive faithful power. Nadia Bowles Weber offers this wonderful image. Imagine, she said, that our lives are a long piece of fabric with our baptism on one end and our funeral on another. We don't know what the distance is between the two. Ash Wednesday is a time when that fabric is pinched in the middle and then held up so that our baptism in the past and our funeral in the future meet. With these ashes, it is as though the water and words from our baptism plus the earth and words from our funerals have come from the future to meet us here today. And in that meeting, we are reminded of the promises of God Promises which outlast our piety, outlast our efforts in self-improvement, outlast our earthly bodies and the limits of time. On the day of our baptism, God named us beloved sons and daughters and called us into faithful covenant with one another. Today, we begin this journey back home to ourselves, tracing with ashes the sign of the cross on our foreheads. 
we remember that to take up our cross and follow Jesus is a vocation to share the fate of God for the life of the world. Those who agree to carry and love what God loves, both the good and the bad, and to pay the price for its reconciliation within themselves, these are the leaven, the salt, the remnant, the mustard seed that God uses to transform the world. We usually think of the Lenten journey as a time to give up something for 40 days from ashes to Easter. As we embark on this sacred journey, I invite you to consider giving up these things. Abandon the illusion you are a self-contained individual. Be a part of this wounded world and find yourself with Christ. Set aside your own desires. Give yourself fully for others. Be the hands and heart of Jesus. Renounce self-protection. Accept your brokenness and reach out for love. Let go of your own plans. Join in the healing of the world. You will not be alone. Follow your soul, not your ego. Follow it right into people's suffering. Follow it right into the heart of God. Pour yourself out. Let the world pour in. Then you are one with the Beloved. <laughs>